the Rukan guy. The hell? You seem pretty ambitious for having just shown up. Actually, there was talk that some hollows came by during the Quincy War. Since you mentioned Ichigo Kurosaki, you must be one of them, right? He must be Grimjaw Jaggerjack. He was one of the mid-class Arankar Espada in the ranks that served under Sosuke Aizen. You know him? Wait, of course you wouldn't. Right, I've just seen him from inserting myself into Orihime Inoue's past. Back then, he was someone we could have easily defeated. What a nuisance. Especially when we're in the middle of a fight with the Quincy's. Would it be better for us to draw him to our side? No. He'd probably start something. In any case, it seems unlikely that he'd team up with the Quincy's, since they believe Hollows exist only to be destroyed. You over there, what did you just say? You mean me? What was that you were saying about who you could have easily defeated? So he heard us? Ah, well, you've got sharp ears. <sighs> that was just his idea of a joke. Don't worry about it. Oh, was it? You know what I think about that kind of a joke? <laughs> it ain't funny. Grimjaw's eyes narrowed, and in a single breath appeared right where the Fullbringers were. <gasps> Stay out of my way! Grimjaw had unleashed his Zanpak toe, aiming for Tsukishima, but Ginjo used his own sword to stop his blade. Are you... a Soul Reaper? Used to be. Now I'm just a wanderer. Tsukishima initiated the opening, but Grimjaw left far away to avoid his attack. That guy moves strangely. It's Sonido. It's a method of movement unique to the Urankars that allows them to slip past our and other hollow spiritual pressure senses. I see. Actually, they were in a wrong car, but I think I might have seen some hollows in the past that did something similar when they got strong enough. <laughs> Surprised you know that much. You've got a pretty annoying way of moving yourself. High-speed movement through Fullbring enabled control over the Reishi dormant in the ground and the power to increase the ability to move. Unlike Flash Step, it only disturbed the surrounding spiritual pressure a minimal amount and was more similar to Sonido in that it was covert. However, Grimjaw's attention had been more drawn to the small amount of blood oozing from his wrist. Ah, looks like you tore through my Iero. Not too bad, Tsukishima. Huh? Tsukishima? Did you insert yourself? <sighs> well, all's well that ends. A sword flashed next to him, and a sort of metal clanging echoed around them. That was close. Hey, what's going on here? I'm sure I inserted myself. It's not really that much of a mystery, though. Regardless of the past, someone who wants to kill me in the present will still want to kill me. When I insert myself into a wild animal's past, much of the time their animal instincts guide their actions more than any memories of me. I don't think that was the case with Byakuya Kuchki, but it's probably the reason it didn't work this time. So human empathy won't get through to hollows, then? What are you complaining about? We're in the middle of a fight to the death! I'm about to cut you down, so shut up and listen. When Grimjaw's mouth warped fiendishly, Ginjo released the spiritual pressure he had stockpiled in his sword, as a high-density point-blank range gets a gatensha. Huh? Grimjaw narrowly avoided it, most likely due to his experience against battling Ichigo Kurosaki. Your spiritual pressure? You part of the same tribe as Kurosaki? You don't look like you're related. So you do know Kurosaki, huh? I don't know if it's a small world or if he just gets around. Meanwhile, the two Quincy's were struggling with what to do next. What the heck are they doing? They go back and forth between losing interest and really getting into it. Hmm. I think he's trying to use a power like Pepe's. So he must have messed up. Pathetic. <laughs> Wait, that Mayuri nerd must know about their abilities, right? Why didn't he mention it before? Who knows? I think Lil would have known, though. Yeah, Lil. I'm pretty sure she could have. Don't you think he probably put you up to it so he could see what would happen? I could believe that. Believe what? Talking about it won't change anything. More importantly, what do you want to do? We could find an opening and fry those guys. A Ronkar and all with my blitz. Like I said, I don't think you can burn them. That's correct. You can't do that, you two. You've got to have on your listening hats when someone tells you something. Huh? You're one of that scientist minions. What a terrible thing to say. Sure, I've resigned myself to being a minion, but you're in the same boat, aren't you? Not that it matters now. What? 
Did you come here to light a fire under our asses or something? <laughs> no, nothing like that. I came here to tell you two to keep out of this. Huh? Oh, sorry. Maybe that was too difficult for your little brain? I'll put it more simply. Are you trying to pick a fight? I'm the one who kills that leopard. What? Strangle. Trepadora. I'm surprised to show his hostility so openly. Youth can be so lovely, but at times it fails to be beautiful. Actually, Loopy seemed in pretty high spirits when he ran off. Does he even have a chance? I heard that Grimjow didn't even lift a finger when he last beat him. Indeed. However, I did not witness it myself. I heard that, though, it was like a surprise attack. After his chest had been pierced from the front, his upper body was burned away by a settle. If that's what happened, then I'm impressed he survived without super fast regeneration. He died. That's why he ended up in the same position as us. Though, I do not know what treatment was undertaken by Lord Sayalaparo after his corpse was recovered. If he wasn't modified from before, the resort here would likely be the same. However... Stop saying such idiotic things! A single sample is more than enough if you're going to simply regenerate something. Though it seems that so-called scientist Espada did some fiddling around of his own. But even though I say it as a joke, I still operate you under the name of the Kurotsuchi Corpse Unit, and thus naturally I've modded you to a much higher performance. A hollow spiritual pressure? Did someone follow me? That ain't Eliel or the others. Yet this spiritual pressure... I remember it from somewhere... No... I'm sure I killed him. The Fullbringers also noticed the abrupt appearance of a strong spiritual pressure and turned their gazes towards it. Grimjaw distanced himself from Ginjo as he tried to look around, but he noticed the spiritual pressure fluctuate. A Sero. No. This guy's about to- Grimjaw turned his back to Ginjo and unleashed a Sero with all his strength. Ginjo's group saw what he was aiming at, and dedicated all their efforts to avoiding what was coming toward them as well. A warped torrent of power and light, a Grand Ray Sero, strong enough to warp space itself and cut through the sky. Though Grimjaw's Sero had been obliterated by it, the recoil allowed him to narrowly evade the stream of light. The wake of the attack wriggled like a heat shimmer, and it was at this moment Grimjaw recognized the spiritual pressure of the enemy Hollow who had just appeared behind him. So it's you. I was wondering who it was. Oh, sorry. I was concerned that the King of the Beasts might have forgotten all about me, so I thought I'd need to reintroduce myself. I'm so happy you remember me, Grimjaw. Yeah, but just in case, maybe I'll tell you my name again. I think you'd forget it anyway in about three minutes. It's Lupi Antenor. Don't go and accidentally call me X number six, all right? Who cares? What's the point in knowing your name now? You should be quiet and just try to remember. You've got to at least remember the name of the one who kills you. Who's that? That just now wasn't a normal Seto. What the heck was that, Tsukushima? The way you dodged it, it was like you knew how to handle it. Well, it's my first time seeing him actually release it. It's a Grand Ray Sero. A special Sero that only Espada can use. I don't think I need to mention the kind of power it contains, do I? Tsukushima looked to a mid-sized hill some distance away. It had been cleanly gouged in half by the attack. I see. Apparently even the Hollows have evolved since the time I knew them. Still, I'm impressed you dodged that just now. I guess savage meat-eaters have sharp intuitions, if nothing else. You sure are talking a lot. You spooked or something? I've always been talkative. Perhaps you're the one who's scared, since you don't know why I'm here. Did you think I was dead? Well, I suppose I was. It would only be normal to die after having something like that happen, wouldn't it? Like I would die before killing you, Grimjow. Huh? Lines like that don't suit you. I haven't got a clue as to why you're alive, but I also can't say that I give a damn in knowing. He instantly let loose a step. But who could have guessed you'd come looking to get killed by me a second time? 
You're such a bleeding heart. Loopy swatted the cellar away with a tentacle, but... What was that? Are you underestimating me? Huh? Frimjo had disappeared with Sonido. Remembering how he had used that method to pierce his chest last time, Loopy created a protective sphere around himself with his tentacles. However, it occurred to him instantly how that was a stupid plan. No! I've- He realized that putting all eight limbs into defense had created a lethal opening. He also knew that he only reacted defensively out of instinctive fear from recalling his previous death. Grimjow! Run, Ray Sero! He poured the blood from where Tsukushima had earlier cut him into his hand. In the next moment, a flash even greater than Luffy's earlier swallowed the tentacles rotating around him as well as Loopy himself. Oh, he's getting real flash, gauging his power. I'm guessing it'd put up a good fight against my Getsuga. Hmm. The volume of spiritual pressure itself may have been greater. But taking into consideration speed and the number of moves, I think even you would have been able to cope with it quite well enough. Giriko's body and clothes had at some point returned to their normal state. You think so? So what do we do? Should we make ourselves scarce and retreat from this mess for now? That is, if there isn't anyone else waiting to ambush us. A Soul Reaper is heading over here. And also someone else. What? This spiritual pressure is... Ichigo? No, it couldn't be. After the light and dust had cleared, Lupi appeared with several tentacles burnt to a crisp. What? Looks like you've gotten a little sturdier. In the past, that would have obliterated him. Grimjaw then noticed the stitch marks that ran down Loopy's face. I see. Something in his body must have been tweaked. Actually, that Urahara guy did something similar to himself. This must have been Zyal Opera. <laughs> you really are so irritating, Grimjaw. I'm glad you're the same old you. I finally feel like I've actually been reborn. Somewhere in the Seirete. Hirako headed to the closest Serete gate and winced at the spiritual pressure in the air. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That idiot Mayuri is really trying to pass off this flashy rampage as just an experiment? What kind of gag is that? Should I follow it up by turning my Zampak toe into a pie and tossing it into his face? That wasn't just any normal Sero I felt. Are they trying to destroy the sun or something? Well, if they're the same as when I met them last time, it should be fine as long as I use my mask. Huh? Hirako then noticed another spiritual pressure that seemed to be heading to the same place as he was. Is it Squad 2 moving under Head Captain Kiraku's orders? No, that ain't it. For starters, it doesn't feel the same as a Soul Reaper. Are they similar to a Visard? No, that's not it either. It's something completely different. After Hiroko adjusted his speed, in order to slip into the path of the mystery spiritual pressure, he was eventually able to see it clearly. Huh? Who the heck are you? Well, you aren't from the 13 Court Guard Squads, are you? It's nice to meet you. My name is Hikune Uboginu. What's with this kid? That's some spiritual pressure. Of course, I couldn't claim this kid is on the same level as Aizen or Ichigo, but I'm at least sure the kid's dangerous. Well, I was wondering about your name, but there's something else I wanted to ask you about. Those clothes look very similar to a soldier's garb, but they're not from the 13 Court Guard squads, are they? In fact, you don't have any squad insignia. You're right. I am Lord Tokunata Tsunayashiro's retainer. Oh, art thou? Tsunayashiro. So this kid is related to the four great noble clans. I'm pretty sure they were involved in the incident surrounding Tosin. This won't do. All I can sense is trouble. Well, sure. So, what business does a distinguished retainer of the Tsunayashiros have in the Rukangai? There are some pretty scary ghosties rampaging around there right now, you know. Yes, sir, I know those ghosts. The other day they almost killed me. What? What do you mean? The observation room staff are practically stealing their salaries if they didn't notice everyone coming in willy-nilly the other day. No, I went to Hueco Mundo on my own. I went to become the king of Hueco Mundo, but the Iran cars got mad at me and beat me up. It'd be great if that were just a joke, but I think this kid's being serious. Why would you become the king of Hueco Mundo? 
Aren't you a soul reaper? Yes. I'm going to become the king of the soul reapers. I'm going to become the Rayo. What now? That's why Lord Tokenata said I have to be respectful to Squad Zero and the 13 Court Guard squad since they're going to be defending me in the future. That's why I honor everyone in the Court Guards. Oh, and I'll become the king of the humans too. Lord Tokenata said he would let me. I'm so happy. Nope, nope, nope. This is no ordinary trouble. This is the eye of a hurricane. In that case, it makes no difference whether I retreat or keep on going. But if I'm actually in the eye of the storm, then I might be able to do something about it. I've seriously drawn the short straw here, though. I keep doing that, don't I? Hey now, are you sure you should be spilling the beans regarding such important matters? Won't you get in trouble with Lord Tokenata? No, it's fine. I was really worried before when I spoke about it without thinking, but Lord Tokenata said I don't mind if you speak openly about it, since everyone will soon know anyway. And he gave me permission. Everyone will know about it? Yes. Lord Tokenata ordered me that if anyone laughs or puts up a fuss, I must use force to convince them. But you're not going to laugh about me saying I'm going to become king, are you? Laughing about that would be idiotic. But it's also not something to be angry about. That's good. You seem like a good person, so I didn't really want to use my sword on you. Oh, sure. Hey, so were you a boy or a girl? I can't tell from how you look. Yes, Lord Tokenata said you are the beginning and the end, so you need no reproductive function or gender or development. That is the way you were made. So I don't really know. I see. Well, the inner workings of living things are complex, after all. I'm sure that must have been a reason. It seems this kid isn't actually a bad apple. But with someone like this, the fact that they don't have any bad intentions is actually worse. How am I supposed to deal with this situation once I get there? I had a thirst. Grimjow had once killed Lupi Antenor. His arm had been restored by Orihime Inoue, who had been summoned by Aizen. The skin on the back and his number six were restored on the spot. This had made Grimjow and Lupi both sexta espada, but the redundancy was put to rest just a few seconds later. Your days are done! Goodbye, Mr. X number six! Grimjow's words and the spiritual pressure that rose from inside his chest, those were Lupi's final memories as an espada. I had a thirst. When he had been brought back to consciousness by Mayuri Kurotsuchi, he hadn't forgotten his hatred. He waited for his chance to take revenge. But when he was deployed to an actual battle, he ended up doubting himself. Toshiro Hitsugaya had once brought Lupi down in a past battle in Karakura Town. Be sure not to forget my face. When we meet again, I'll have my revenge. I will twist off your little head. He remembered those words and decided that in order to remain himself, he needed to tear that captain to shreds. An incurable thirst. Their reunion had come sooner than he could have imagined. The Kurotsuchi corpse unit had been thrust onto the battlefield to fight against Toshiro Hitsugaya, who had become a Quincy's zombified pawn. However, the moment he had seen that, Lupi realized the urge to destroy in his heart was cooling. What? Why are you already broken? You were supposed to be my plaything! I was supposed to break you! The excitement and urge to destroy were gone, and he didn't even experience the glee of crushing someone weaker than him. An unfulfillable thirst. After the war, and even after he had heard that Hitsugaya had been restored to his previous state, he hadn't been driven by the will to go kill him again. The Husk Squad, huh? That might be right for the way that I am now. It's like I don't actually feel like I'm living. He spent his days capturing hollows with unique abilities and doing odd jobs for the Department of Research and Development. While obeying his instructions, his days were filled with insatiable thirst. But there was nothing to thirst for, nothing he wanted to fill the hole that had opened in him as a hollow. What had withered away might have been his desire itself, the one fundamental nature of a hollow. All he felt was resignation. Yeah, I thought I would dry out and shrivel up, hollowly withering away, and that I'd have the sorry fate of turning into the sands of Huecomundo in the end. But then Grimjow appeared before his eyes and all of the thirst disappeared. There was dread, hatred, joy. 
the emotions that seemed to have run dry burst forth from inside of him, almost as though the piece of himself he had lost, his whole, was overflowing from a well deep within. The Grand Ray Saro that Grimjow had released severely damaged several of his tentacles. Lupi didn't flinch. Rather, his anger had amplified his spiritual pressure, and the speed of his feelers increased. Grimjow started to receive continuous blows, blood splattering everywhere. Lupi then transformed his eight tentacles into bristling expanses of needles and sharp blades, rotating them rapidly like helicopter blades. Cut it out with those weak attacks! Grimjow leapt around in the intervals between attacks, swiftly kicking Lupi away. He tried to follow up with another Grand Racero, but... Uh, as Lupi collapsed, the tips of his tentacles released a stream of Saros one after another. By mixing his blood into them, they became denser than a common Saro, and assaulted with the force of Bala bullets. Like I said, that's weak! Grind, Pantera! Waco Mundo. Haribel had opened a garganta under Las Noches' canopy. Are you really going to go too, Haribel? Do you really think it's okay to leave Hueco Mundo alone? I'm just going to gauge the Soul Society's intentions. I'll leave it to you to get Grimjow back. Leave it to me to protect the place. Lady Haribel, please try not to overextend yourself. Sorry. In order to make sure that never happens again, I need to do this now. It's possible that Soul Reaper Child could become an enemy like Yuhava if we don't do anything. Haribel and Neliel then disappeared into the Garganta. Looks like they've made a move. What? Did they? Seriously? Are they headed to the world of the living or to the Soul Society? If this is related to that weird Soul Reaper, then it's probably the latter. In that case, this might be our chance to get together with Candy and Minnie. So, what are we doing? Are we just going to go? Yeah, but we'll wait a while before we get really rowdy. First, we need to figure out where Candy and Many are, while those hollows are distracting the Soul Reapers. The Soul Society, Squad 1 Barracks. I'm gonna head out for a bit. Could you keep an eye on things here, Nanao, my dear? What? Where are you heading to? I didn't think you had plans for anything today. To Central 46. I'm making a quick stop at the Golden Assembly. What? Don't look so scared. It's not like I'm heading to my death or anything. That is true, but I thought you still needed more time to prepare. Yeah, I wanted to dig around a little more, to be honest. But after hearing that report from Momo, I felt a little uneasy. Well, Ugetake might get mad at me about this. Captain Ugetake? Why? Since he always tried to see the good in people. Well, I think that's the good part of Ugetake that I lack myself. This is from back in the day. But Ukitake, Tokenata, and I were classmates at the Spirit Academy. Tokenata didn't stand out and was neither praised nor scolded by old man Yama. He just went through life like a shadow. Ukitake would talk to him like he was normal, though. I think Ukitake might have thought they were friends, even after he graduated. Until that thing happened. No, maybe even after that, too. Just because we were graduates at the same class, Ukitake gave Tokenata the benefit of the doubt. He thought if Tokenata had just a change of scenery, if he just got some sort of opportunity, he could definitely be reformed. He said he was sure Tokenata would confront the crimes he had committed. That's... I wasn't able to believe that, but I also hadn't been able to kill Tokenata back then either. So, the time's come for me to take responsibility for not making a decision sooner. That's all there is to it. Not only did I push work on him, he would rather not have done. I'm starting to wonder if it might have just ended up a fool's errand. I might have done an injustice to Isagi. As he finished talking, Okikiba returned from delivering instructions to Squad 2. Hey there, Okikiba. I'm headed out for... What happened? It seems that Shuhei Isagi, who headed to Katakura Town, has applied to a Gente Kaijo. A Gente Kaijo? That doesn't sound good. Apparently, it's because an unidentified enemy force has appeared. But according to the observation room, the communication was interrupted when they were about to give him permission. Furthermore, all of the observation equipment for Katakura Town had been cut off, and the town is currently in isolation as a result. What happened to Private Ryanosuke and Shinomatarame, who we had dispatched to Katakura Town? Yes, a communication with them has also been cut off. Please, get in contact with the Soul Reapers in the surrounding towns and instruct them to report on the current situation. Nanao, I'm sorry, but since our problems on both fronts have intensified, would you go too? Yes, sir! 
Nodding, Nanao and Okakiba left the room. <sighs> Looks like things have taken a turn for the worse. Tokunata might have already got the jump on us.